If you're using leaves this year from your garden, I can almost guarantee you, you are doing it wrong. Let's talk about why. Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about those beautiful leaves that are all over our lawn and yard and exactly how to apply those to the garden or to your house plants, depending on what you do. So this method will work for both house plants and the garden. The benefits will be the same, but there are some extreme warnings that come with using leaves and also a proper way to actually use these. So let's jump into what makes leaves so special and so much different than a lot of other organic additives we put in our garden or on our house plants. So when we think of compost, we typically think a large volume of different organic material being dumped into a compost and then the compost through heat and decomposition eventually turns into usable compost that looks almost similar to dirt but not quite what soil is. So that is what compost is and we will note during the composting process that it can get anaerobic and smelly, it can be aerobic and not smelly, but there is heat, meaning there is bacteria happening. So bacteria is helping with the decomposition of that organic material. Now, if you've ever studied or looked up how to compost properly, they're gonna tell you you need different layers of material. You're going to need a green layer, you're going to need a brown layer, etc., and so forth. And this is because we need a wide variety or a specific ratio of carbon to nitrogen. The reason for this is because bacteria actually uses nitrogen from the soil or from the surrounding area to help decompose products or organic material that is high in carbon. And one of those organic materials are the browned pieces of organic materials, which are leaves. So leaves have an imbalance in carbon to nitrogen. They actually have a much higher carbon ratio than they do nitrogen ratio, meaning when they are decomposed on their own, it is very rare for or ultimately never happens, where bacteria is what is helping with the decomposition. It usually is fungi because fungi thrives in that environment. So if we use leaves in the compost, we already know we have to add a certain level of green material to that compost in order for the bacteria to play its role and do its job. Now, if we use straight leaves, which for many of us, we may not have the right ratio for this, um, for the carb to actually change the carbon nitrogen ratio. So we would actually use something called leaf mold. And now it's not mold in a bad way, it's mold in a good way, but we are functioning on using fungi as the decomposer for making our leaf compost. So strictly leaf, leaf compost is very high in carbon, very low in nitrogen. And if we actually incorporate leaves as they stand shredded or otherwise into our soil profile, whether that be indoor plants or outdoor plants, we are going to end up with a nitrogen imbalance in our soil. Ultimately, if you do this at an excess rate for an extended period of time and you're actually tilling these leaves into the soil, your nitrogen levels in your soil will appear lower. So if you were to do a soil test, nitrogen would appear to be much lower. And that is because the nitrogen is being used to help with the decomposition of the leaves. This is why using something like a leaf mold method is better. So when we use the leaf mold method, the byproduct is essentially compost. It looks identical to compost. And it actually is already so decomposed that even if we were to till it in or mix it in with a potting soil, it's not going to make much of a difference when it comes to um, nitrogen and actually stealing nitrogen or affecting any sort of balance. But we can top dress it with it and we can incorporate it. And in some cases you can actually use it for a seed starting mix or a great way or a great place to put cuttings because it's very rich in you know a lot of micronutrients leaves have, but also the macronutrients. So the big boys that we need to help with growth. The obvious methods or the obvious ways of using leaves is to mulch with them and mulch in the sense that you're going to protect uh, soft perennials or perennials that are sensitive in your area. Obviously you can compost with them and then overall they do improve, improve soil health. But if you choose to use the whole leaves or shredded leaves, you have to just simply top dress, do not incorporate 
incorporate in the soil. Treat them the same as you would a wood mulch, which we discussed in previous video, because it will have the same effect to your nitrogen cycle in your soil. So if we're going to do a leaf mold, which is the ultimate way of handling leaves, we're going to want to shred them and don't overcomplicate this in any way, shape or matter. You do not need a shredder or anything specific. You need to rake all your leaves up in a pile and then you need to simply set a lawnmower on top of it and the lawnmower will do all the shredding for you. The reason for this is because the smaller the bits of leaves, the better or the faster the decomposition will happen by the fungi. This is because you have more surface area for the mycelium to actually attach to and ultimately the dissolving process happens much faster. So shredded leaves, this will happen much, much quicker. If you choose to use whole leaves, this whole process can take up to two years. So just keep that in mind. So after you shredded your leaves, you're going to put them in a leaf compost bin. So one that is strictly meant for leaves, or you're actually just going to put them in your classic leaf bags. The key here is we need to put it in an area that doesn't have too much air circulation because we need to keep the moisture up and we also don't want it to be in sun. We actually have to keep the temperatures nice and cool. So spores of fungi will survive all ranges of heat um, or cold. However, the actual mycelium, in order for them to cultivate and have a happy life, we actually want those temperatures to be within normal. And so when we're trying to achieve this, we want to put it in a shady spot out of full sun, especially if we have it in the actual garbage bags themselves. So after this point, you're just gonna to wanna to check on it on a regular basis. If it looks like it's drying out a bit, you're gonna put some water on it, and then you're just going to simply leave it. You don't have to mix it, you don't have to rotate it, nothing like that. And when it's done, it is going to look very similar to regular compost. Now, depending on what area you are in, this can take six months, this can take a year. So if you're in Canada, for example, if you were to put them in the compost right now here in October, we have a winter where fungi activity is relatively low because this is using fungi and not bacteria. There will be no heat for this to happen. So your process of decomposition by the fungi isn't going to help happen until the spring. So once the spring hits, you will go through the entire summer, most likely, with no leaf compost, but the fall, you will have compost. So that's what I mean by a year. One growing season, it needs to mature. Now, if you live in a warmer climate, if you rake your leaves up now, and you have a mild winter where fungal activity can take place in the absence of the heat that we typically find in bacteria soil or bacteria type compost, then you will have the um, leaf compost in the spring. So it kind of depends on where you are. Unfortunately, we cannot control that, but I do encourage you to try it out regardless of where you are. So like I said, very high carbon content. This would be the equivalent to adding like a humic acid or a nice heavy carbon source. So it's not spoken about a lot as a nutrient that plants need, but carbon in the actual entire ecosystem um, of plants and soil is incredibly valuable. So it's valuable to both the soil structure itself and then to the plants actually as well. So it is a nutrient that needs to be present, not one we always test for, one that very rarely is uh, deficient, but if you're looking for better soil structure, better moisture capture, if you're looking to reduce your water bill when it comes to watering, then this is definitely a solution for you. Now, if you are a houseplant grower, I've said this a million times, a biologically active soil is a good soil. And so um, soils that we have in potting uh, scenarios, such as indoor plants, we usually lack a lot of fungi material. And so I encourage you to utilize that because the mycelium web is just as valuable in a houseplant scenario as it is in an outdoor scenario. So again, it's going to work for you the same. So whether it be one small baggie for a small houseplant collection or an entire backyard full of leaves that you're going to use in the spring, 
give it a shot. If you have tried it, let me know in the comments down below how it worked for you. And make sure you check out the Gardening in Canada blog where I gave a little bit more detail on how to create your own leaf mold. In the US, it's M-O-L-D. Everywhere else in the world, it's spent, spelled M-O-U-L-D. <laughs> so, because it's a Canadian website, I did do M-O-U-L-D. This is not a spelling mistake. It's just the way we roll here in Canada. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this video and what video you want to see next. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.